Hello, today we're going to talk about the number one thing that I wish I had done before buying my embroidery machine. But before we get into all of that, I have to talk about the positives. I have the Janome MB7 and it has been a blessing to my life. It has a free arm on it that allows me to stitch out more stuff with less hassle. It has seven needles, which means that I no longer have to stop and change threads uh, when I change out the colors. And it even allows me to be able to greatly increase my production and be able to make more stuff in less time. So that means that I am now able to have a space inside of Painted Tree. And if you haven't already, check out my video on my Painted Tree Boutique space. I'll leave a link somewhere up here. And also go over to my website at thimblebook.com and check out some of the merch that I have there. Before purchasing the Janome MB7, I really wish that I had downloaded and read the manual before purchasing the machine. If you are in the market for an embroidery machine, then I would recommend going to the manufacturer's website and getting that manual and reading it from start to finish. And here's why. So when you turn on the Janome MB4 or MB7, uh, when the, we first power the machine on, you press these two buttons right here and hold them and then it will pull up the amount of time that you've had sewing on the machine. I've had 24 hours sewing on the machine, but once I get to 1000 hours, then the motor has to be replaced. And those motors are extremely, extremely hard to find. Um, the only place that I found online that even has a motor is all the way in the UK and it costs roughly $300 to buy the motor. And the other issue with that is that um, you would have to wait for it to come from the UK and then install it. So that is a problem because you could have downtime in your machine while you are waiting on getting a new motor. So what I will probably do is order a new motor uh, just to have one on hand uh, because I cannot have any, I cannot have any downtime on my machine. Um, and sewing parts online does carry the motor, but currently that motor is not in stock at, uh, and they say that they will put you on a waiting list. So this is a problem with this particular machine, though I really do love it. It is an issue. Okay, so I already have a design set in the machine. It's just what was already there, but I just wanted to show you one thing. These are the hoops for the Janome MB7 or MB4. The M represents all of the Janome hoops, which is only three of them even available, the M1, the M2, and the M3. Let's see? Then you have your J hoops which are your monogramming hoops. And you have all of these different choices, but they're not showing up because I have a certain size hoop already selected. But these are your choices. These monogramming hoops are not readily available in store, at least not here in the United States anyways. Then you have your Tajima hoops that are available. But, and there's only six Tajima hoops programmed in this machine. Keep that in mind. Now you have your sock hoops. There's only three. There's two sock hoops and that H represents hat. And it's a 100 by 90 and that is the proprietary uh, Janome hat hoop. It is extremely expensive. It costs around $400. So 90% of people are not going to buy the Janome hat hoop unless it came free with their embroidered machine. Um, most people are going to buy either a Durkee or a Easy Frame hat hoop. Um, though I have the Durkee and um, those hoops only run around from $80 to $100. So uh, the thing about that is you cannot select the specific size of the hoop. The only thing that you can do for the Durkee hoop is to select M2, which I'm embroidering this on a hat, so I have M2 selected. And that is a 126 by 110 millimeter uh, frame. So even though my hoop size is slightly larger than this, this is the only option that I have to even select. 
Let's say that I wanted to buy some Mighty Hoops so that I could use those magnetic hoops to hoop my items. Uh, I know the most popular Mighty Hoop is the 5.5 by 5.5. I could not select a custom hoop size in this machine. Neither could I set my um, embroidery software to have that custom hoop size. Yes, I can set that custom hoop size in my in my embroidery software, but once I bring it over to the Janome, it doesn't rec it recognizes it on screen. But when you go to print, you can only select M1, M2, M3, or to pick one of these monogramming hoops here that most closely aligns with that 5.5 by 5.5 uh, inch size. So that is kind of a problem because you lose some uh, you lose some space inside of your hoop because you can't select the exact same hoop size as the hoop that you might be using on the machine. And then you have to trace your designs now to make sure that you're not going to catch your, um, that you're not going to hit a needle in the machine, which is what I have done on my first needle in the machine here. You can see that little, Maybe you can't, it won't focus. There is an ever so small needle strike along here where I accidentally struck um, the frame on the machine. Luckily I didn't break it, but that's what happened because I was unable to select the proper hoop size. While I am extremely happy with my Janome MB7, I really wish that I had read the manual ahead of time and I would advise anyone who is in the market for a new machine, regardless of if it's an embroidery machine or not, to read the manual ahead of time so that you don't get any surprises. When I was in the market for a new machine, it was between getting this machine and a Chinese multi-needle machine. I have a video about Chinese multi-needle machines and I'll leave a link somewhere up here. Please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to receive more sewing related content.